The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, this is Patty Hunter or Patty's Page here in my home studio. Today on Messenger is going to be a very special guest. He's from Toronto, Ontario. His name is Matt Gerber and he's a, a writer, a singer, a songwriter. So let's enjoy these next part one and part two in a moment. Today my guest is, like I said before, is Matt Gerber. And where are you? I am in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And where were you born and raised? I was born uh, outside, I was born in Kitchener, Ontario, and I was raised in a small town called Wellesley, Ontario. So that's well, in southern Ontario. Wow. How southern is that compared to Toronto? Uh, it's it's roughly the same uh, same degree south. Right. Uh, Wellesley is just uh, let me see now roughly two hours west of Toronto. Ah, near Mississauga. Well, <laughs> past yeah, past Mississauga. Yeah. It, I don't know if you know where Stratford. Is. Yeah, oh, we know where that one is. Like one every year. It's not too far from Stratford. Oh, that's a good. Oh, it's a nice country out there, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, while you while you were growing up, were your parents into what type of music? Well, the music that I remember being played when I was growing up, uh, I do recall a lot of Anne Murray and Roger Whitaker. Uh, I don't I don't remember any other specific uh, specific bands or artists that they listened to a lot, but. Uh, I, I think they, I remember in car rides just listening to a lot of uh, public radio and, and getting a lot of different types of music as well. Did you, did you more or less listen to CBC radio? More or less, yes. Yeah. Um. Uh, except for, uh, I think, except for I do remember a number of tapes where uh, yeah, they had a lot of different, different uh, Anne Marie tapes, Anne Marie, and some uh, some Nana Muscuri. I don't know if that's in that name rings a bell. So, did you follow them? What professions did they work in? Your parents? Well, my my mother was a school teacher, yeah. and, and when I uh, when I was born, and then then when my brothers were born as well, I have two younger brothers. Then she became a uh, a full time homemaker, mm. and so left left teaching and uh, didn't go back. And Papa. And my father, he worked for a refrigerated shipping company called Herb Transport. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, so he started out there as a driver, and then worked his way to becoming a mechanic, and then eventually became a. Uh, a vice president of operations of that company. Wow! Did uh, you so follow? Hmm? I, I, well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Continue. Um, I I did work for. Uh, I didn't really follow in their footsteps. No. Though I did. I did spend some. Uh, I did work some summer jobs and some part time jobs at my at the company where my my father worked. Uh, just just to make some money during the summers and while I was going to university as well. You went to university, where, where is that? I went to Ryerson Polytechnic University in Toronto. My dad used to work for Ryerson Press. That's oh. many moons ago. 
Yeah. He was a typesetter. Yep, so that's where I went to, uh, to university. Mm. I took an engineering course there, and I've, I've got an engineering degree now. Where do you work then? Can I ask? Sure, yep. I work for Bombardier Aerospace in Toronto. Ah, doing, doing well, what? I work there as a structural repair engineer, and I, I, my full-time job is I develop uh, repair engineering designs for airplanes. My dad was in the Air Force. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you remember, what what did he do when he was in the Air Force? Um, what you say? Sorry. What did uh, yeah? What did your father do when he was in the? He was a Royal Canadian Air Force. He was a navigator. Oh yes, fantastic. Um, when you started to become influenced in uh, several things as you were growing up. Who influenced you the most? Uh, that's, a good, that's a good question. Um, in, terms of, in terms of music, I, I think that the bands and artists who, who I really latched on to growing up, and that was back in the, uh, I guess back in the 80s would be my formative years. Um, I do recall being a big fan of the of the Norwegian band Aha. Aha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As well as uh, as well as Gowan. Gowan, I met him several times. Oh, did you? Yeah, I could tell you more about him, but we're talking about you. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's some of the um, some of the bands that I remember from the from the eighties being a big influence, and then. And then throughout the '90s, uh, I still, I still was was aware of of, of artists like I, I would say Johnny Cash was a was an influence, yeah. as well as some other Canadian bands such as uh, Bare Naked Ladies. Uh -huh. uh, Radiohead was a, was an influence for me. How about Celine Dion? Celine Dion. Uh, not so much an influence. I was always, always impressed at the, the music she was able to perform and her, her vocals, of course. But, uh, but I think that that style of, of music, I was aware of it, but it was, it was I never really focused too much on, on. I, I think I would call that uh, pop or adult contemporary. I'm yeah. not sure what you classify that as. Yeah. Uh, could be anything really. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, so, uh, which came first, your singing or your playing instruments? Uh, definitely my singing. I, I can remember singing in, in choirs in church and in public school. I can remember singing uh, a long, long time ago with my, with, with, uh, uh, my mother, sometimes mm. when we would go on road trips, she would sing and I would be able to sing harmony parts to, oh. to songs like, uh, such as the, uh, the song You Are My Sunshine. That uh, was one of our favorites. Are you tenor? Pardon me? Are you a tenor or alto or what? Uh, I, would, I, I would say I am a tenor. Uh, yes, yeah. A yeah, you got a good alto. voice. You got a good voice for it. Oh, thank you. What instruments did you learn while you were growing up? You know, musical instruments. Right. It. Uh, I was. I was given a ukulele as as a child, but I never learned how to play it mm. back then. I. I would say that I didn't necessarily learn how to play an actual instrument until I started to teach myself harmonica when I was in university. Oh, you taught so, yourself. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So that was that was my first instrument that I learned how to play, and then I had once I graduated university and I had started working, um, I had started to to get together with friends and just just singing and playing some music, and they all they all played guitar, and I didn't play any any stringed instruments at all. So I asked I asked them to show me some some basic chords on the guitar, and. From there, I just started learning how to play guitar on my own. 
<clears throat> went, and you, so yeah. you, you started off with a ukulele or a guitar? Well, I'm, well actually, I started with, with the guitar, and then once I got comfortable playing the guitar again, yeah. I, I then remembered I had a ukulele that mm. I had been given as a child. So then I went and started to learn how to play ukulele. Mm. That's cool. So even though, yeah, even though I had one for many, many years, I never learned how to play You just it, had so the, the, the fire in you to start it up, mate. I think that was it exactly. Uh, <clears throat> when, I, when I first was given a ukulele, I just, it, with any instrument, it takes some time and some practice to play. So yeah. until you have that, that desire, it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> so now how many instruments do you play? Oh gosh, so... Do tell. <laughs> so I do play, yes, guitar, ukulele, I play a little bit of mandolin. Mm. Uh, I, I do have a, I have a tenor banjo that I sometimes play as well. Uh, I do play, a, uh, I have a number of harmonicas, so I play uh, harmonica. Mm. Uh, I, I have a didgeridoo, so I play that. Is that one of those things that you blow through, or...? That's correct. Yes, yeah. one of the uh, one of the instruments from Australia. Oh, oh, what age did you start? Do you when did you start writing lyrics? That was probably close to twenty years ago. That's, oh. that's when I recall starting to first focus on writing a song and writing lyrics for a song. Mm. And how uh, how long did it take you to perfect your lyrics? Well, I don't know if I've ever really perfected them, but it's one thing I've learned from doing doing a lot of songwriting courses and just songwriting in general and writing mm -hmm. lyrics is is I've learned that it's not necessarily the writing portion of the of the process, but quite often where you, the most important part is the rewriting portion. So to go back and to yeah. polish yeah. the lyrics. It's to to make sure that everything is is how you want it, and to get get any ideas that I want to get across in, yeah. in the best and most efficient way uh, possible, in the most natural way. So it's it's a big process, but I feel now probably from about six years ago, I feel that I've been starting to get a lot better at that process. So um, do you read notes? Just, <laughs> just <barely. laughs> I, I probably read, like I read music, proper music, probably at a, uh, like a very basic level. Uh, well, uh, how do you compose I, your I, songs? Typically, I will compose my songs by ear. That must be hard. So I, uh, well, most mostly when I'm writing songs, I'm using my. Uh, either guitar or ukulele or other stringed instruments, almost more as a rhythmic, uh, rhythmic ah. like a rhythmic instrument. So I'm, I'm using it to keep time and also to to play a, a, a chord progression underneath the melody. Do you have so, a meter? Pardon me. Do you have a meter or whatever they call them? Uh, like a metronome. Yeah. Uh, I do have them, but I don't typically I don't typically use the the metronome when I'm writing the music. So I'm, at that time, I'm usually playing around with timing to find out does it work better to play a song faster or slower. Mm. Just I, I try to find a, like a natural rhythm. And I think once once I've developed, or once I feel that I have uh, am, have achieved that natural rhythm, then I might use a metronome to find out what that, what that tempo actually is. And what? then I'll write what genre? Uh, I write in a, a number of different genres. So I, uh, I do enjoy writing folk songs. Uh, I do enjoy writing quirky styles of songs, but I'm not sure if they are specific to a genre. Yeah. Uh, um, I, more recently, I've been writing more, uh, more children's music. Hey, that's cool. Yeah. But I also do like to, to dabble with, with pop music and, and uh, I guess you would say alternative rock music as well. But 
but I don't know if they're uh, always a good match for me. But I do I do enjoy writing different different genres of music. Do you have you worked with other bands, or are you just working by yourself? I have played in in a couple different bands throughout uh, throughout the years. Sometime uh, uh, I did I did play in at least one band where we where we self produced and self released an album. Wow. Yeah. And so our band was called First and Stop. Hmm. Yeah. So we put out a. An album of of original music. So I I wrote some of the music, and one of my other bandmates he wrote the other other half of the album basically. And so that was a that was a band with five members. And so we uh, yeah we enjoyed uh, getting together and playing at different uh, uh, bars and pubs and places around Toronto. But mm. do you do a tour? Uh, pardon me. Do you tour? Are you solo well, now, or are you still with the band? Right. Uh, no, I've been been more or less performing as a solo musician for for the past, uh, I'd say, eight years. Mm. And and I do try to. I, I have I haven't officially toured, but I do enjoy to uh, to play at events and play at venues outside of uh, outside of Toronto. So, uh, and I have. Uh, I have traveled to some other countries and I've played music there, so I could say I've played in them internationally. Wow! So, <laughs> you ever I come? Have, you should I come down. Australia and, and down in Mexico. Australia. Are you on radio? Your music. Some of my music is on a. a uh, it has been played on a on a station over in Australia, actually. Mm. It's a station called Kinderling. Kids Radio, uh -huh. and they have a they have an on, they're an online radio station. Mm. And, yep. So I have have music there, and and another uh, thing that I found was kind of neat. One of my songs got placed on a playlist for the in-flight entertainment system for some of the airlines over oh, Australia. Oh, congratulations! Yeah. Quant well, thank you. Yeah, it was on Qantas and Jetstar, so so I can say my music was actually really t like literally taking off. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll take that. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you're doing basically solo. Um, how long have you been uh, performing with other bands? When did you start? What year? Right. Well, I started to. I started to play with other with other bands uh, uh, with 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 the band Thurston Stop. Probably, I would say as as many as fifteen years ago. Mm. Yeah, yeah, fifteen years ago, may, maybe a little bit less than that. But but we were playing for uh, for for quite a while. Sometimes we would it would just be uh, my friend. One of my friends in the band and I. So sometimes we would just perform as a duo, but but other times we would gather other members around to form an actual band, and we would we would we would play at bars and pubs around Toronto. Do but you? That only went on for a couple of years. That's great. That's great. And it kept you occupied, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, I like busy. to I like to know. Um, do you have another CD out? Yeah, two of them or one or what? Oh yes. Well, I have a, a couple of CDs out. So the the CD that that the, the band and I put together mm -hmm. under the the band name of First and Stop, that that CD was called Airing the Pilot. Mm. And I also have two solo CDs. So my first CD was entitled Ain't That Dandy. <laughs> And my uh, my latest CD that I released last year is called Ladybugs and Dandelions. So Ladybugs and Dandelions that was released as a as a children's album. Mm. And the other one? Uh, the the other uh, my first solo album, uh, Ain't That Dandy. That was released more as a. Uh, that was not specifically a. 
a genre. I guess I guess I would call it a singer songwriter album. Mm. So it had a combination of some songs and ukulele and guitar. Some of them were some quirky songs. Other other songs were more more serious. Nice. I had I had one song that I would classify as 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 a country song, but, but more of a uh, possibly more in the vein of a Chris Christopherson or Johnny Cash style of song. So you you're finding your niche, you might say, as you get older, or I think so. I I think I've learned to embrace uh, certain song styles that suit me. Yes. And and with those, then I feel those are the ones I I feel very comfortable performing those. I I feel comfortable in my own skin, so to speak. And you and I, I wrote lyrics. And you That's put, right. you composed it and sung it for me. So I was yeah. just wondering, my friend, would yeah. you like to sing it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And another song, maybe? Sure, I could do two songs, yeah. Cool beans. Um, yes, so should I introduce this song that we... Oh, if you wish, it's up yeah. to you. Okay, yeah, I will introduce the song. So this is a song that, uh, that Patty and I have co-written. So Patty wrote the lyrics, and I've uh, I've provided the the melody and the music for the song. So Show your guitar. Pardon me. Show oh, your yes. ukulele. Yeah. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Love it. Looks like Hawaii. Yeah, this is a eucadelic brand. Of, <laughs> well, a eucadelic style. Ukulele manufacturer Kala, so it was a, it's a perfectly fine ukulele. So I'm very happy with it. So this song is entitled Two Little Owls." So this is the song that that Patty wrote the lyrics for as a as a a poem that I thought was a very lovely little poem. So I hope that I hope that I can do this song justice. Thank you. me a while to uh, write that. Well, it's a nice little song. I think it's a it's a sweet little sweet little song about uh, about uh, nature, which is a it's an important thing. Oh, especially when they're babies. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Big eyes, little bud. You know. <laughs> Do you have another song for this old girl? That's about sure. three or four minutes long, or something. Uh, certainly, I have a. Certainly, certainly. I, I, I have a song I can play. Uh, a song about lions. Ah. The song is called. Uh, this is a song from. It's actually on both of my solo CDs. It's on Ain't That Dandy, and it's also on Ladybugs and Dandy Lions. And oh, before I uh, sing it though, I, I recalled a bit of trivia that I don't know if I don't know if you know this. But uh, do you know what you call a gathering of ladybugs? Uh-oh. 
No. It's it's called a loveliness. <laughs> Do so continue. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> Well, we're almost uh, over with this one half hour uh, part one of our interview. Uh, we have another show to be to go with you uh, in a couple minutes. Uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, this is Patty Hunter, uh, Patty's Page. We'll see you next week in part two of our interview with Matt Gerber from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Hey. Bye bye. You're always in my heart and every dream. Don't let this time apart. Give in to all our fears. God will keep us close from up above. So until we meet again, Godspeed, my love. God is with us always for the 